Here are the pots before I refinish them. This is how I received them when I purchased them from an estate sale. And then I'm going to antique them, spray them first off with copper, and then I will antique them to make it look like aged concrete or aged copper look. Now that I've had the, the urn uh, spray painted and I used um, Rust-Oleum's uh, copper, hammered copper, and I love that look, uh, that's basically going to be just the dark shadows uh, that color will end up being um, in the cracks and dark areas. Uh, the top coatings are going to be done with Caribbean sand, the Rust-Oleum Caribbean sand, and then I'm going to be using the Valspar uh, Lovely Buff and Secluded Gardens um, spray paint to bring in some lighter values of color as well to make it look like an aged urn and kind of a coppery feel too, some rusty colors coming through, which is the, the hammered copper. Um, but my next step is to go ahead and rub them on. Um, what I do is I spray everything in a paper plate and then I do a few shots of spray paint, uh, the colors I'm gonna be using since it dries so quickly, and then I rub it in with these old rags. And I'm gonna show you, demonstrate how I do that now. Okay, now I'm going to spray in just a little bit of color into my dish. Um, I'm going to start off with some secluded garden. And I'm going to put a few shots of that in. And then the Caribbean sand. And like I said, the Caribbean sand gives a really nice um, texture to this. So I'm going to go ahead and do Caribbean sand. And you have to work pretty quick with this um, because what's going to happen is your spray paints are going to be drying. And I'm just dabbing in. And now I want some of my, and you're basically just kind of playing with it. This is the lovely buff. And I like to mix that with the Caribbean sand because I think the Caribbean sand's a tad transparent. But what I like about the Caribbean sand is that it gives a lot of texture. So I'm dabbing in. And what I've done is I've dipped into my palette some of all of the colors and I'm just lightly dabbing this onto the surface areas. And for this area, I'm going to just rub it lightly, the larger areas, and this just helps to tone down my colors. And you want to shake it pretty good. I've already sh uh, shook this up a little bit. The Caribbean sand gives a great texture to this. And dab, and it's basically as your artist's eye, you're dabbing. I want more of this lovely buff. You can see how frequent you really have to dab it. So I'm dabbing into the lovely buff. And you can rub it on. It's, it's just basically your artist's eye of how you like this, how you want the colors. What is the idea in your mind that you want? And, you know, some people like it uh, less uh, colorful and more of the copper showing, more white. And it's basically up to you, but I'm dabbing surface areas where I want the color to be bright. And you can see it's already toning down that just artificial copper look. Um, I really like having some of the turquoise on my edges to show where it would it naturally, and then maybe a little patch in here where it naturally turn the colors. I don't want it to be all turquoise or all a bright color because if you look at aged concrete, it's not all that one color. It's, it's different values of color. So I'm gonna do a lighter section in here and kind of blend it in a little. And I, I've just brought in some of the turquoise and then come back over a little bit maybe with some white. So you want some areas to be very bright. And this is how I'm gonna be finishing the whole piece. You don't want the texture of your rags to show or your sponges. Um, 
and just kind of play with it and experiment how you like to do it, your technique, you're kind of find your technique. But I start with some dabbing, and then as I need to rub it, any areas you don't like, you can always go back and respray it with your original color. That's what's really kind of fun about this. And you can basically spend as much time as you want on it. You know, if you want just a quick job, or if you be if you want to be more meticulous and you know get it to the perfection, perfect, perfect look. I had some pots I just took two minutes to. I whipped on some color, rubbed the color real fast. You know, if you don't care about the pot too much. This one is going to be right here. I'm actually refinishing it right where it is. It's so heavy, it's so hard to lift. So I'm refinishing where I want it to be. Now, as I'm rubbing this on, I'm already seeing I'm not quite liking it. It's too dark. So instantly, just quickly give it a rub off. Um, here. And your looks, you know, that's a little bit better. So as if you make mistakes, like I said, it's no big deal. You just refinish it. Spray it back with that natural copper again. You can even spray some of that copper into your pot here. And I'm really liking that look. It's just a muted, very muted look. And what I did was I studied urns, some of my urns and planters, um, to look at the natural. How does it naturally age? And, um, and in the cracks, of course, it's all darker. And then you get sections of lighter color. You get se sections of um, colors that have turned with lichen and moss. Uh, that's why I brought in some of that... Um, that green and this is such a beautiful color like I said I found that this was the perfect color it wasn't too bright this secluded garden by Valspar it's in the satin color here it's it wasn't too bright where you don't want that fake gaudy looking turquoise jumping out at you it's just a very beautiful muted color that works works really well and then the sand gives it that nice texture now what I'm going to do because I'm even though the sand, the Valspar um, sand is a Caribbean sand. Oh, it's Rust-Oleum Caribbean sand texture. This is an outdoor paint, but because of that texture, I'm going to spray it a little bit with um, some matte when I'm done. Some matte clear to help preserve that texture to it. And basically, you're just dabbing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the pot. And once I finish it, I will show you basically spraying and dabbing, spraying and dabbing. And I'm going to show you the finished look. Um, and I do want, right now, I'll bring in a brighter highlight. You're basically assessing it as you go along. And I do want some brighter whites in here. So I'll show you how I'm adding that. Just dabbing. Now, you don't want to leave it like that. You want to blend in your edges to be more natural. Um, and then you can even take some cleaner cloth here. Wipe and blend. Just so that this area is a little bit lighter and then you get darker areas. And then a highlight on the rim is also nice too. Every once in a while. I mean, this is being extra perfection. That's why I said being a perfectionist. Um, one of the pots I took like five, 10 minutes to do. But if you really want to become, you know, if you want it to be real special, I'm dabbing just my tip edges with some of that white, kind of like the natural line that would leach out in the cement. Right in there. I don't know if you can pick that up or not on the camera. And I'm doing just the rim too in that highlighted, you know, but this is as an artist, I would, this is, I'm working up this pot as a, as a piece of art. Like I said, the other one, I just took five minutes and whipped on the colors, and it still looks pretty good. Um, this, I just want to show you how to be more uh, detailed in your coloring. But here's some more lighter, just dabbing, to give it more of that two-tone value. And of course, the more you put in, you could sit and play with this for hours, um, working up lights and darks. But keep your cracks. You want to keep those natural cracks. And there you have it. And I will show you the finished product when I'm done. And here is the completed pot. And you can see the difference because the one to the left is the original color. I haven't refinished that pot yet. They were purchased from an estate sale. And I did one at a time to show you. 
um, but I really do like the overall look of it and I love the values. You really do need to take your time to get those values and tones. If you just leave it plain, it definitely doesn't look as good. Um, but I do love the look of this and for now I'm happy with it until I change my mind again. But for now, I do like it. It brings it back to that natural, uh, at least a little bit more natural than that artificial color right there. And it's basically personal preference, but uh, let me know how you like it and what you think of it. Um, and thanks for tuning in.